Hi, welcome to Earth and Sky. Uh, this week is going to be a quick one. Um, unfortunately, my beautiful bride is <laughs> still gone. Um, she's living it up. She sends her best to all of you. And, uh, and she has been doing great. And uh, I just can't wait for her to come back and, you know, well, of course, to see her, but also to, for her to share all of this amazing things that she's learned. So all of you, um, people who are students and friends and, and uh, all, of, all of you who know her so well, um, it's going to be really exciting when she gets back. So Albert Einstein, of course. Um, so, okay. So today, what I was thinking about was, it's, uh, so last week we were talking about um, that your ego wants it to not be your fault. Um, and we were talking about how if we accept the fact that everything that happens to us, because I mean, if for no other reason, we have to carry that with us, we have to deal with that. It is part of our life, so it's our responsibility. And if you accept that all of these things in your life are your responsibility, um, that it's your job to make your life what you want it, um, then it comes down to the idea of what choices you make, right? So you get in the car. I do a lot of analogies in cars. I don't know why. I think that's a thing for me. Anyway, so you get in the car and you got your coffee like in the morning and you're driving down the thing and you're do 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 and the guy in front of you hits the brakes real hard and you're and you're like, God, why? Oh my God, why do these people do this to me? You know, oh my God, why do these people do this to me? And um, and it's so funny because we're so quick to all of the, when something happens, why did you make that choice so this thing happened to me? Why did you make that choice so that this thing happened to me? Um, and we're so quick to do that. And it's so funny because then you stop and you kind of go, oh, wait, like he hit the brakes. Yes, he slammed on his brakes. But all you had to do was be a little farther back, right? You just, the choices you make. You give them distance. If you give the car in front of you distance, then no matter what happens, you can compensate. You could slow down nice and easy and that cup of coffee, nice and easy, no big deal, right? Um, but then there's all of the accidents that happen because people don't gauge that. Most people, you're in a hurry and if you're not, if you can't reach through your front windshield, over your hood, and almost touch their car, you're not close enough, right? And that's not, you need to give them space. If for no other reason, then you don't want to hit them. Nowadays, I mean, we're getting to the point where the cars will do it for you, which is kind of good and bad. I mean, it's good in the sense that hopefully the computers are smarter than we are, especially when they only have one purpose in life, which is to not hit the car in front of them. Um, but. Uh, but people are just, you just keep, we get closer and closer and closer. The better cars react, the faster they go, the better the brakes. They're like, oh, no, 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 I can react even faster. I can do all of this, stuff. I can get right on there. And you can. And eventually you have accidents, which is why 80% of the accidents I see are because someone was too close to the tail. Someone was right on someone's butt. And so that's that whole thing. We're so quick to blame them. Why did they hit their brakes so hard? Well, your job is your life. And so all of the things that go on in your world, you need to rethink. You need to reanalyze, re re-gauge, because those choices that you make are really important. Not just about, like, let's say, not to have a car accident, but to that extra space you give makes you more calm. There's a uh, Mythbusters episode is a perfect example. There's a Mythbusters episode where they test getting from one point in California to another point in California, like, I don't remember, like 45 minutes, an hour away. Okay, let's say an hour, because they do it by hour, right? Like 40 miles an hour kind of a thing. So they, they go an hour, and one of them is just trying to get there as fast as humanly possible. And they're taking the same route, same freeways, that kind of a thing. And the other person is just supposed to just go speed limit, chill, let whoever in front, da-da-da-da, and see what happens. Just to see. 
Um, the one that was giving it everything they had and going as fast as they could was somewhere in the ballpark after an hour was something like, I want to say it was like minute, minute and a half, which is the equivalent of like one or two stoplights. So if you had to, so if you sat at one or two stoplights, if they had to stop at one or two stoplights that the other person didn't, they would have caught up. After driving for an hour, the other person was just like, and so the one that's pushing, their whole day, they're like this, because they made that choice. They chose to push and rush and not accept the reality of in front of them, which is it's going to take what it takes. There's a distance that I have to go and people that are between me and there. And with that idea, I will go, of course, I'll go as quickly as I can, but you don't try and push and stress and do all, because that is also a choice. And that's kind of where the other part I was going to talk about today was pushing, trying to get that done, trying to get through, trying to get out the door, trying to get dressed faster, all of these things because we're so busy, we think if we push harder, we absolutely will do things faster. And you may do them a fraction of a second faster at times, but you add in the stress that goes with it. And then you take the fact of when you're that stressed, you actually don't see or think as well. And in many cases, that stress will actually slow you down. So, uh, and just, so a thing with that, in the end of the morning, I woke up, got a phone call. Hey, I need you. Okay. And they were like, can you do it fast? I'm like, oh, yeah, okay. So I'm, duh, 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 and I'm getting ready, and, I'm, duh, 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 and I threw in the clothes, and I went to grab a shirt, and I had this one shirt in mine. I don't know. I have a thing with shirts. So I had the shirt in mine, and I was like, I know the shirt's right here, and, he, and I go through the stack, dig, 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 and it's not there. Dig, 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 dig. It's still not there. I'm like, I don't know where, oh, it's got to be somewhere, and I got to go, man. And, and I could feel the anxiety. I could feel the stress, right? And then all of a sudden, it hit me. I'm like, calm down. <laughs> Calm down. So I went, okay, pause. And I looked down. That stack I checked twice. That stack I checked twice. There's the shirt. And I just went, wow, really? That's super interesting. And that's kind of where what got me started with this talk today was I just went, pause. It's all about the pause, you know? Um, and it's so funny because it's actually presented to us. There are so many people and groups and, and just, I mean, the world actually knows that if you, instead of being so stressed, if you just pause, everything gets better. You think better, you react better, you make better choices. Um, the Jedi, <laughs> which I know, what? I know, fictional characters. but. Be mindful of your emotions, is what they say, which I've always thought was a nice way to say, understand your emotions. You're gonna feel them, but understand why. Understand what they're doing to your thought process. Understand them, be mindful of them. I just always really like that phrase, that phrasing. And they, uh, they also said, solutions will present themselves. So you relax. If you need to accomplish something, you do everything you can to do that. But you don't freak out. You just wait. And a solution will present itself. And it's so true, basically all the time, if we just keep our eyes open. Um, the Kabbalah says, pause, what a pleasure. Um, pause. And in a moment of high anxiety, emotion, whatever, you pause. And the pleasure part is kind of an interesting idea. The pause with a pleasure. The pleasure is the, um, the chance that you have right now. It's a chance to learn from this moment. It's a chance to take an emotional moment that is probably a challenge for you and evolve from it. Get something beautiful from it. Understand yourself, life, everything that goes with it so much better. And that's Pause, what a pleasure. It's kind of a beautiful thing. Um, even parenting books. I mean, if you've read a parenting book, I know, I don't have kids, but I've read a parenting book or so. Um, but the parenting books even say, you know, um, 
kids freaking out, blah, 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 you're all upset. You take them, pull them out of the situation, then you walk away and you take a breath. You pause. Why? Because you don't want to react to a kid. You don't want to react to a kid anxious, angry, aggressive. They're just a kid. They're just learning how to navigate this world. We're a little farther along the way, but if you really think about it, for real, the children are learning. They've learned stuff that we've already learned. So we're here to teach them. But that curve never stops. That learning process, they're here, you're here, so you're teaching them, but you have this whole way to go. Just keeps going. We're not done. We're not done learning. We're not done exploring and understanding and becoming better. And as they grow up, they're going to be behind us, but we need to be there and we need to keep evolving for them, if for nobody else, for them. Ideally, you should do it for you too, but hey, whatever gets you there, right? Um, but in the end, you know, it's all about taking that pause. When you pause in that moment, looking at it from outside of all of your emotions, outside of your ego, take a breath, step back, let all of the anger, anxiety, stress, um, hate, jealousy, fear, let all of that go for just a moment and go, if this moment, if, there were, if, I did, if it didn't mean anything to me and I saw this moment from outside, if I saw this moment from in five years, I was looking back on this moment, what would I think? How would I see it? What choice would I make right now in the future thought? You know, if I was way in the future and it already happened, and I'm like, what would have been the perfect way to handle this situation when none of it matters anymore? Emotionally. And try and do that because I think you'll find there's a whole list of options that you wouldn't have thought of otherwise. There's a whole list of things that you can do, ways you can react, people you can engage. I mean, there's just, there's so many ways to deal with every situation. And yet we usually have a tendency to revert to one or two. Um, we react with those one or two and it doesn't help because they're the same one and two all the time. And like I said last time, the only thing you can't do is what you've always done if you want to make your life better. If you want to change things for the better, you just have to stop doing the exact same things you've always done. And so if you are in five years and you look back into some situation, any situation that is stressful, anxious, anything to you, and you go, okay, it already happened, but I was here so-and-so said something, I needed to make this decision, whatever, whatever. What would have been the perfect way to accomplish that? What would have been the best way to deal with that? And you might be able to, you might surprise yourself. Um, and the last thing is you've paused, you've looked at the situation, tried to look at it maybe from the distant future, distant past kind of an idea. Um, you try to figure out every situation is a learning moment. It really is. What can I do in my life better? What do I need to understand more? But, but just every moment is a, learning, is a learning moment. And try to see if you can start to see those, those little nuggets of information in these stressful situations. And then I would say at the end of your day, whether it's when you're, if you're sitting there watching TV uh, at the end of the night, Set a reminder, at the end of the day, one of your home units or whatever, you know, your AI, have them remind you to take a couple minutes, reflect on your day, reflect on the choices you've made, what's happened, and could I have done it better? Because we always can. But taking just a couple minutes, two or three minutes, just think about the things that happened, good, bad, and the other. Could I have done it better? Um, and then try to think about the outcomes that could have changed and, uh, and then prep yourself for like the next time. If, 
if you have a moment in time where you're like, oh, I'll be in that same situation again tomorrow, in a week, in, you know, in six weeks, at some point in the future, whenever I'm at so-and-so's house, and try and program it in so that you can go, you know what, next time I'm there, I'm going to try to do it differently. I'm going to walk in and we're going to talk and I always get so angry or I get so sad or I get so afraid, whatever you do. And then I'm going to pause and I'm going to do this other thing from what I always do. I'm going to make, I'm going to make some of those changes so that my life changes for the better. I'm going to not do what I've always done. So I hope you like this talk. Uh, please like the video if you like it. Uh, subscribe if you haven't. Um, I'm hoping in a couple more videos we'll get crazy back with us. Angelica, I call her crazy because she's crazy. And I'm crazy about her. So um, hopefully she'll be back. And uh, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.